Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of the manufacturing process and in this presentation we will be talking about some special uh, casting processes and uh, these uh, special casting processes uh, are slightly different from the sand mold casting process. So, the special casting processes. There are three casting processes, special casting process about which we will be talking about. Uh, one is like shell mold casting process, then investment casting process and then permanent mold casting process. So, uh, in this presentation basically I will be focusing in the shell mold casting process. So, in case of the shell uh, mold casting process uh, as it appears from its name uh, the shell uh, word a shell is prepared uh, using a mixture using mixture of uh, basically sand plus resins and plus additives. Uh, so, uh, a mixture of these three is used for preparing one shell which is used as a, a mold cavity uh, for uh, pouring the molten metal so that after the solidification desired casting can be achieved. Advantage of this uh, process is uh, that it helps to achieve very close uh, dimensional control as well as the surface finish. So, uh, with the main part uh, related to the, this casting process is preparation of the shell mold, shell mold. So, what uh, we use for preparing the shell mold uh, basically uh, mixture of sand uh, plus uh, raisins plus additives. This mixture is first prepared. So, uh, this sand mixture uh, sand can be of the silica sand or zircon sand uh, and depending upon the metal to be processed by the casting process uh, either silica sand or zircon sand or mixture of the two can be used. Uh, and uh, normally the grain fineness very uh, fine grains the sand grains of the uh, fineness number uh, 80 to 150 grain fineness number sand grains are used for preparing the shell. And uh, these uh, sand grains uh, depending upon the size you see the coarse sand is used for you can say where even rough surface of the casting is acceptable, but if high degree of the surface finish is needed uh, then fine sand grains are used for good finish. So, the finish which can be achieved in this process is a range like say 3 to 5 micrometer which can be achieved using the fine sand grains. And uh, this uh, uh, then a mixture of the resins basically thermo setting resins are used thermo setting resins like phenol formaldehyde formaldehyde is used as a resin plus additives are uh, this, these resins act as a binding element 
or binding member uh, in the mixture to hold the sand as well as the additives. Additives are uh, used basically to uh, achieve the good surface finish and uh, to reduce the thermal shock due to the pouring of the molten metal and for this purpose uh, like coal, dust and uh, uh, the magnesium uh, dioxide uh, are used as additives. So, these uh, will be helping to uh, improve the surface finish as well as uh, reducing the thermal shock. So, that the cracking and uh, fracture tendency of the, uh, the shell can be reduced when the molten metal is poured. So, uh, all this mixture, all this uh, mixture basically is uh, prepared, uh, there is a particular process wherein Mm, like the sand, dry sand uh, which is free from any clay is uh, uh, provided with the, the liquid resins and uh, it is thoroughly mixed with the resins and uh, the additives are thoroughly mixed for the use. So, this mixture of the sand plus resins plus additives is prepared and then it is used for preparing the shell. So, what we will be doing uh, basically uh, this uh, uh, mixture is, uh, is uh, placed over the this mixture is used for preparing the mold. So, say this is the chamber where this mixture has been kept and in this one, uh, one uh, uh, the pattern, uh, uh, pattern of a particular shape whose shell is to be prepared, say this is the pattern this is attached with this cover and which can be opened and closed. So, this is the pattern which will be used for preparing the cell. This is basically a metallic pattern, uh, mostly the cast iron or grey cast iron is used for uh, preparing the pattern and this pattern is basically heated. It can be heated from 100 to 250 degree centigrade. So, this heated pattern is, uh, is fitted in this box uh, which is carrying this mixture of the sand, resins and additives. And then uh, what we do? We try to rotate this box so that it is up and uh, upside down. So, in this situation uh, what will be happening say our uh, pattern uh, this uh, will be the location of our pattern and whole of the sand now will be falling over the hot pattern. So, the sand with mixture with the resins and additives will be coming in contact with the pattern. So, resins will uh, fuse and they will get, get a stick to the surface of the pattern. So, one shell is formed all around the pattern like this. So, depending upon the contact time and the temperature of, uh, of the pattern, 
contact time of the sand mixture with the pattern and the temperature of the pattern cell of particular thickness is formed. Normally, it is desired that the uh, that uh, the 5 to uh, 10 mm thickness of the cell is formed. So, this is the situation. So, once uh, uh, it gets a sufficient time then it is again brought in the same position where the shell uh, well, where, uh, where the pattern will be the upside and the sand mixture uh, will be in the bottom. So, whatever is unused uh, sand mixture is there that will be at the bottom and whatever the portion will get a stick uh, to the uh, pattern that will be forming the shell. So, in that case now the this uh, pattern is uh, is a taken out. So, this pattern say uh, here is uh, of uh, shape like this with the with the presence of the shell all around the pattern. like this. So, this shell now we need to take care of. There are certain things now about which we have to talk like what are the factors that will be affecting the thickness of shell or the thickness of the cell which is to be used. So, uh, like say uh, there are two factors one is pouring temperature of the molten metal and the size of casting and the complexity of casting shape. These are the factors that will be governing the cell thickness which we need to use. Uh, this cell thickness as I have mentioned uh, depends upon the contact time uh, for which the sand mixture remains in contact with the hot pattern plate uh, hot pattern and the temperature of the pattern. So, there is a proper uh, relationship which has been uh, studied and where in like say the temperature of the pattern varying from 150 to 250 degree centigrade is the temperature of pattern in the x axis and y axis is the shell wall thickness in mm. So, cell wall thickness say varying from 2 to 10 mm. So, when 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 mm. So, uh, so this is what we will see that when uh, the contact time is for 5 seconds, then the, the, the rate of increase in the shell thickness with the change of temperature. There is a uh, one definite trend that increase in temperature of the pattern increases the uh, shell wall thickness and uh, we will see that when the time is like this 20 second or time is like this 10 seconds. So, uh, there is a increase in the shell thickness with the increase in the pattern temperature. So, with the increase in pattern temperature more and more uh, amount of the resin will be melting and uh, it the sand mixture will be forming the cover around the pattern to increase the thickness of the cell. Uh, and uh, similarly when it gets longer time then uh, so increase in the cell thickness with the increase in the uh, contact time is due to the increased availability of the time for which heat will be transferred from the pattern to the sand mixture. So, that more of and more of the sand mixture will be getting attached with the pattern 
and uh, so which in turn will be increasing the thickness of the cell. Cell thickness uh, as I mentioned uh, is uh, uh, which is to be used depends upon the pouring temperature, size of the casting and uh, the complexity of the shape of the casting. So, once the uh, the cell of the prepared proper thickness has been achieved which uh, thickness is to be used for, for, a, for a particular casting that is achieved through the trial and error method. So, uh, as per the casting shape geometry and the size uh, the, the, the proper thickness is uh, identified and once the shell is made then it is required to, to remove the shell from the pattern. So, removal of shell from pattern. Uh, this is uh, uh, what is achieved and in order to facilitate the easy uh, removal of the shell from the pattern. Uh, like uh, some uh, of the agents are sprayed in the um, over the surface of the pattern so that the removal of the pattern uh, becomes easier uh, and uh, once the pet, uh, shell has been removed once the cell has been removed uh, so proper curing is done so curing of the shell is performed in order to provide sufficient uh, properties. So, curing of the shell uh, is to be done in optimum manner so that it gets desired strength and ability to take the load of the molten metal. So, means ability to handle the metallostatic pressure is uh, achieved through the proper strengthening of the cell. Uh, in either case, uh, if the, the curing of the cell has not been done properly, then it may lead to the over cured or under cured. So, in case of the over curing, the uh, over curing will be reducing the lowering the strength of the shell uh, because of the burning of the resins and in case of the under curing and uh, not just the low strength, but uh, it also leads to the blow holes in the casting. So, uh, it is a it is a desired that the, the things are properly cured. Huh. So, uh, you know for uniformity of the uh, shell thickness, uniformity of shell thickness, uh, it is important that the temperature of the entire pattern is uniform say the pattern was of this uh, type. So, heating of the pattern should be done in such a way that the temperature of the pattern at almost all locations is uniform and this uh, variation should not be more than 20 to 40 degree centigrade uh, because the, the temperature governs the melting of the shell uh, resin in the mixture and which in turn affects the cell thickness. So, if uh, the temperature is uniform then cell thickness will also be uniform. Too large variability will be leading to the non-uniform cell thickness and which can lead to the defective casting. So, cell thickness temperature for uniformity of the cell thickness, uh, the uniformity of the plate temperature or the pattern temperature is important. Now, we will see which for uh, the casting the different types of the metals we have to use the different uh, mixtures for uh, preparing the cells. So, for example, here we will have the two types of the sand like silica sand and 
zircon sand. Then we have to use the resins and then additives. So, what is the amount of these uh, constituents which is to be used when the different uh, casting processes are uh, when the different metals are to be processed by the shell mold casting. So, say for low carbon steels what is used for low carbon steel basically 63 percent of the silica sand and 30 percent of the zircon sand, 5 percent of the resin and 2 percent of the additives are used. While for the medium and high carbon steels uh, mostly it is the zircon sand which is used 96 percent and 3 percent and 1 percent of the additives. For the grey cast iron GCI uh, basically 90, uh, 60 percent of the silica sand and 35 percent of the zircon sand and uh, 4 percent of the resins and 1 percent of the additives are used. For copper alloys like brass and bronze mostly the silica sand of the 90 percent and uh, 6 percent of the resins and 4 percent of the additives are used. For aluminum castings 95 percent of the silica sand, 4 percent are no zircon sand and uh, 4 percent of the resins and 1 percent of the additives. For Mg alloys for magnesium this is for aluminum alloy and this is for uh, magnesium alloys. Uh, uh, mostly zircon sand is used of the 95 percent, 4 percent of the resins and 1 percent additive. So, these are the kind of mixtures which are used for preparing the, the sand mix, sand resin and additive, additive mixture for cell mold casting process. Uh, the cell mold casting process is, uh, is used for uh, the very uh, simple shape, but with the much closer control over the dimensions and the surface finish. So, uh, now if we see the process, the, this uh, process is mainly used for, uh, for preparing uh, the components like uh, IC engines, cylinder head and bevel gears. These are the two common types of the components which are uh, prepared apart from the many other uh, fine components of the automobiles. Advantage of this cell mold casting process is that once the cell is ready then uh, we can uh, pour the molten metal into the cell as per the uh, uh, requirement uh, so that after the certification we can get the casting. But we need to consider here one point that since the shell is of the limited thickness say this is the shell of the thickness of the like say 5 mm, 6 mm or 8 mm. So, it basically provides the shape to the mold, uh, but it may not be able to handle the pressure of the molten metal. So, in order to make it capable so that it can handle the pressure of the molten metal suitable support systems are used. So, it may be like say the grey cast iron uh, support of, of the same shape as that of the casting uh, as, as the same, same shape as that of the mold is used or for, uh, so this, this may be of the cast iron or uh, we may provide the backing of the send also from the all the sides so that it can take the metallostatic pressure of the mold. So, suitable support to the cell need to be provided so that it can uh, take the metallostatic pressure and the load of the molten metal uh, without uh, fracturing of the cell. So, that after the solidification suitable casting can be achieved. Coming to the advantage very close 
control over the dimensions is possible. So, accurate close control over the dimensions oblique tolerance is possible. So, accuracy accurate in dimensions. So, which can vary from say 0 0.0132 plus minus 0.13 mm. This is the kind of the control over the dimensions is possible and the good surface finish is achieved like say 3 to 5 micrometer RA surface roughness is realized. Then uh, the process is uh, 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 the surface finish and the close control over the dimensions then uh, uh, wide size range of the castings can be made using this maybe as high as 200 to 350 kg size castings can also be uh, made. And uh, this process can be used for producing the very fine or uh, thickness or thin sections, thin section features as low as 0.25 mm. So, uh, the, the, the features of the thickness of 0.25 mm can also be produced with the help of uh, this um, casting process. Since the permeability of the shell is good, so good permeability of the shell uh, actually reduces the scope for the porosity. So, the casting is sound and it is by and large free from the uh, porosity. Coming to the limitations, uh, the limitation is that uh, since the shell for preparing the shell we need to prepare the mold. So, uh, so we need to prepare the pattern and uh, preparation of the pattern will be justified only in case when the large volume of the castings are to be made because metallic patterns preparation of the metallic patterns is an expensive affair and that is why uh, the metallic patterns for preparing the shell will be justified only when the large volumes are to be produced. So, the process is economical for large volume production purpose and uh, then the another uh, limitation uh, means the finish uh, is not that good as it uh, needs the machining. So, uh, means the components produced by this cannot directly be put into the use uh, especially when the close control over the dimensions and the surface finish is needed. So, for those cases uh, this uh, uh, process cannot be used like the investment casting process for those metals which uh, for those components which can be directly uh, used into the service uh, can be produced by the investment casting process because they offer the good surface finish and the good uh, control over the dimensions. Now, I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation basically I have talked about the principle of the preparing the shell in uh, in case of the shell mold casting process and I also have talked about uh, the uh, applications and the advantages of this process. Thank you for your attention.